Welcome to our annual Solstice Worship Service. We are so glad you are all here. My name is Amanda Esco, and I'm the Director of Religious Education here at First Church. We missed it. As we were picking up kids, finishing up our work days, or at happy hour with colleagues, we missed the moment of winter solstice. It happened this afternoon at 3.22 p.m. We are already closer to the light. The seasons have changed. <laughs> I know, you didn't think so, but you are. <laughs> the seasons have changed. We've moved from fall into winter with the knowledge that spring and summer are all that closer to us. The infinite movement of our planet brings change and with us with it, whether we like it or not. There is hope for something different in the change. It's this hope that ignited humanity throughout time, and that's what we celebrate tonight. Tonight's worship is one of joy, one of light, and one of hope. We gather tonight in the spirit of hope. Hope in this holiday season, hope for change, hope that the light will return, hope that longer days are just around the corner and that there is hope in the darkness of these days. You noticed as you sat down that you had flashlights. Religious education teachers love props. <laughs> as the service goes on, we will ask you to find your light. At that time, join us and shine your light brightly. Until then, let's leave them turned off. <laughs> when our service is over, feel free to leave your lights in the seats or in the baskets by the exits. Our chalice lighting tonight comes from Joyce Rupp and Macrina Weidkerher in their text, Circle of Light. The winter solstice celebrates the return of hope to our land as our planet experiences the first slow towards greater daylight. Soon, we will welcome the return of the sun and the coming of springtime. As we do, let us remember and embrace the positive, enriching aspects of winter's darkness. Now, let us rise as we are willing and able to sing hymn number 55, Dark of Winter. The choir will hum the first verse by themselves, then we will all join in on verse 1.
Tonight, we have arrived at the winter solstice. The ancient Romans celebrated the solstice. The Latin word for it, solstice, means the sun standing still. It's the shortest, darkest day of the year. But in our light-saturated world, we barely notice that something important is happening on this day. This is the day when everything starts to change. On this date, December 21st, there's less sunlight in the Northern Hemisphere than on any other date in the year. Our ancestors knew because they lived and died by the light that comes from the sun. There are more rituals and festivities with, associated with this date on the calendar than any other. And it's been that way from as far back as we know anything about human life. In the Orkney Islands, far off the coast of northern Scotland, there is an ancient structure. It's not famous like Stonehenge but it's just as significant. It's a sort of cave built into, the, into a hill at a place called Maze How. This cave is over 5,000 years old. There's Viking graffiti from the 12th century all over the walls. The ancient people who lived on the Orkney Islands marked and celebrated the solstice by constructing this special room built into the hill. You enter it through a long, low passage at the front. You have to bend over to get through it. For a long time, it was thought to be a burial chamber or a storage facility. It was only a little over 100 years ago that somebody finally figured out what this structure is really for. It's a celestial observatory, a Neolithic masterpiece built by preliterate people that we know almost nothing about. For about three weeks before and after the winter solstice, the light of the setting sun shines straight down the passage from the entrance and illuminates the back of the central chamber of the cave. Gradually, the light shrinks and shrinks. On the solstice, it almost vanishes. Only a spark, only for a moment. And then, like a breath, it starts to expand. Light at the darkest time of the year. Necessary light. The sun seemed to be disappearing. Were these ancient people hoping to capture it in their observatory? Or were they honoring the pulse of the universe? These ancient people knew what was going on up there among the stars, knew that it affected what happens down here. They were so aware of the solstice as a time unlike any other. They marked it as a turning point, a time when something happens to the light in the sky, which signifies a continuance of life and a sign that the darkest days are over. On the winter solstice, the longest night, the shortest day, the darkest moment of the year, the sun seems to be going away, but of course the sun isn't going anywhere. It's us. We have been going away from the sun, tilting away because of the tilt of the earth on its axis, away from the light. And in our time, it feels like we are, in many ways, tilting away from the light. But at the solstice, it's as dark as it's going to get. What we celebrate tonight is the turning point 
in our lives, in our hearts, in our intentions. And isn't it good to have a point, a distinct moment, a special night when we know that from here on, little by little, things are going to start to get brighter. So tonight, we can all look up and out and say, to quote the songwriter Paul Simon, hello darkness, my old friend. It's time to lighten up. Dark and cold. And old man year is bending low. When the sun runs off to bed too soon. When the nothing but a giddy moon. Where is the light? Where is the light? Where is the light? Each morning when I rise, and it's dark when my angels cry, and it's dark when off to school I go, and it's dark again when I get home. Oh. Where is the light? Where is the light? Where is the light? Oh. Like a candle flame, the light? and I'm flaming like a fruit flambe. Where is the light? Where is the light? Where is the light? Oh, the light's inside of me. Where is the light? Where is the light? Where? favor to ask of the children out here in the audience. My wife Carol and I are going to tell a story. But we need some people to listen to the story. If you're a kid and you'd like to listen to the story, would you please stand right now and uh, just come on down the aisle? Thank you. One, two, Three, four, five, six. Good. Seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, I'll give time because some of them are up in the balcony. Yeah. Long, long ago, before there were cars and computers, and you didn't have to turn off your smartphone in order to come to a service, <laughs> nobody had a watch. Before there were airplanes or railroad tracks, you had to grow your own food no grocery stores. Before there were plastic bags, Yay. there were, there were baskets. Before there were nylon coats with zippers, there were furry animal skins. Nice, huh? And before there were electric lights, there was fire and starlight, and best of all, sunlight. And I just thought of something. Back in those days, they made beautiful things. And Carol is wearing a couple of them. Tell us what those two pieces are. This, this is a tortoiseshell necklace given to me by a friend in, from Kenya. And these are stone beads. And they made things out of turtles, and they made things out of rocks even in those days. Long, long ago though, people looked up at the sky and they saw how the stars turned and turned and how the sun got lower and lower and lower in the sky, how it was dark in the morning. Remember those days when you have to get up in the morning and it's dark and you have to go to school anyway? dark in the winter time and it was almost dark in the afternoon anybody remember having to go out of school in the afternoons and it's already dark again yeah. whoa what if the sun disappears will it come back is it going to come back we don't know these people who lived so long long ago we don't know very much about them So let's just use our imagination about who they were and what they did. Let's imagine them watching the days get shorter and shorter in October, November, and December. Now they have to start building more fires to stay warm. Imagine if you had a campfire right there, you could stay warm, right? When the days get shorter and the darkness becomes longer and longer, so let's imagine, let's get in our time machines and let's go back a thousand years, two thousand years, three thousand years, four thousand years, five thousand years. You, let's imagine you and your family are huddled around a fire. It's cold. And the wind is raging outside. It's a very cold night. And it's very, very dark. So remember, there's no electric lights. So if you want to see anything, where are you going to get your light? Yeah, from the fire. It's especially cold and scary because we can't see outside. It's the first day of winter. It's when darkness comes earlier than any other day of the year. Now imagine everyone in your family is worried that the sunlight might not come back. And without the sun, there would be no plants, no animals, and no people. Everyone wants to know, when will the sun come back? 
We know what would happen if the sun really went away. We need the sun. The sun makes things grow. We need the sun for food, right? We need the sun, food for ourselves. Any, all the animals need food. So we, we can't, can't let, let the, the sun, sun go, go away. away. We everybody, can't. Everybody say it with us. We, we can't, can't let, let the, sun the sun go, go away. away. We can't let the sun go, go away. away. We can't, we can't let, let the, the sun, sun go away. away. Go back and tell your parents. We can't let the sun go away. The sun is going away. The sun is going away. The sun is going away.
In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like stone. Snow had fallen. Snow on snow. Snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter. Long, long ago. This is the solstice. The still point of the sun. Its cusp and midnight. The year's threshold. Where, where the past lets go. And becomes the future. light, the light.
here on the third planet from the sun, the winter solstice is a new beginning. Let the solstice be an inspiration, a model for our own passage from darkness to light, little by little, but in the right direction. Three cheers. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and let's sing together number 235, Deck the Halls. May the dark of the womb nurture you and the deep unknown possibility call to you on this longest night of the year. Happy solstice to all of you. I wish to extend, before we prance off to have our chili, I wish to extend thanks to all of our solstice singers to Holly, who has put this thing together, to David, our pianist, to our children's choir for your wonderful music, and to Nels from the drum bus. Yes. And a, and a great big special thanks to Amanda Esco and the religious education team. Thank you so much.